morning, Eli. Good morning, Miss Bliss. How are you this morning? I'm doing fine. Excellent. What is a hybrid classroom? That's a really good question. Um, a hybrid classroom can mean different things for different people. For me, I think a hybrid classroom is when some of the students are learning together in the classroom, but there are also some students who might be at home or in a different country or not in the classroom for whatever reason. Well, a hybrid classroom is where you've got digital learning, like laptops and computers, and you've got face-to-face -face learning, and those are used at the same time and we can choose which one we want to do. When you were learning at home, did you enjoy being on the computer and still connecting with your classmates and your teacher? Yeah, but I like uh, being online and being in the classroom just in like different ways. Mm -hmm. Why do we need hybrid learning? Well, that's another great question. I think we need hybrid learning, uh, especially in the last couple of years, because sometimes we haven't all been able to be in the same space. So a hybrid learning space enables us to continue learning even through times where we're having difficulties being in the same classroom together. I think it's because it lets us open up our classrooms. So when we're learning and we're learning together, we're not just focused on what the students want to learn, what the teacher wants to teach them, but it lets us go beyond. So building a hybrid classroom, it means making sure that the students have access to technology and that they feel confident in using it and that they know how to use it safely so that we can expand their opportunities to learn in different spaces, different locations. Hello and welcome to this morning's live stream uh, on the 21st Century Online Conference, uh, our first session in May as we get towards the end of the school year in the Northern Hemisphere. So thank you for anyone joining us live. Uh, my name is Justin Hardman and I'm proud to uh, introduce this session on creativity for all using Adobe Express uh, uh, with uh, Roland who's joining us from the Philippines. So without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to uh, Roland and uh, let him take us through uh, this pretty amazing uh, product. All right, over to you, Roland. Hi, Justin. Uh, thank you for having me in this session. Uh, I'm very thankful for all of you who's been watching this uh, live recording or live session. And uh, I just want to give some context on what we're trying to do in this uh, workshop. I, I call it a workshop because you have to do some kind of activities for you to get the certification on this uh, program. So I'm just going to briefly give you an overview on what type of steps you need to take so you can get certified on what we call the Adobe Creative Educator Program. So with my, with my slides, I would like to make it like maximize it so we could see. Okay, so this is a ongoing uh, workshop that I have been running since the 2020. And uh, right now, it's going straight three years. Uh, we have been partnering with the local schools here in the Philippines, and I'm going to give you some reports on what's the progress in on this uh, campaign. So again, my name is Roland Banyas. I'm the training director, co-founder of Creative Nation Academy. It's a training a development uh, company on which we provide uh, Adobe skills, creativity, design. I'm also an Adobe certified expert, instructor, and creative insider ambassador uh, with lots and lots of um, things that we're going to cover in this session together with some of the, together with some of the things that I've been doing as a consultant. Uh, as you would see on my badges, I've been all over the place lately. But this is not as important as the content I'm going to show to you. So this is just one, one step for you to get one of those badges, okay? 
So I would like to highly um, uh, like give some suggestions to all of you to subscribe to our channel. Uh, my channel is Creative Nation Academy, so you could see some of our content. And uh, recently, I've just been on TikTok for almost a month. And I'm very surprised that after a month, I have been uh, recently, I've got like 3,000 uh, followers. And uh, I would highly, if you want, you could definitely check it out uh, my channel. And for this session's agenda, I'm just going to be very straight on this. We're going to cover a lot of things like getting started on the Adobe for Education program. How, you, how do you get certified as a level one? Uh, Ace, how to use Adobe Spark or Adobe Express. Spark is a name that has been uh, using, that has been using for a lot of years, but until they rebranded like last year, uh, as of January. So I'm, I, right now I'm just like on the transitions phase. <laughs> okay, and uh, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks as an edX or Education Exchange veteran, so you could get like some insights on. Uh, or some techniques, and then if you have like questions, I'm I'm gladly uh, going to run on check on our comments. I want this to be very interactive as possible. Okay, so I would like to share this um, quote from uh, a person that I really like uh, admire, which is Sir Ken Robinson. Our task is to educate our students for them to face the future. Uh, probably as educators like us, uh, we may not see the future, but the, the real goal is for us to help them make something out of it. So that's, that, that message re really resonates to me as of this day because it has been the pinnacle of my, uh, my teachings. And who's this session for? This is for almost everyone. If you're an educator, if you're a student, uh, if you're if you're planning to get certified and uh, to make your uh, your credentials much more legitimate or let's say legit, you can definitely uh, jump into this session. So what we're going to need is that we need an Adobe ID. I'm just going to give you a demonstration on how you can do that in the in the, in the later down. Uh, you need just some basic design skills because using Adobe Express, if you if you know how to use like text elements and combine them with each other, uh, but don't worry, I'm just I'm going to give you a demonstration on how to do this on the fly, but not that like in depth. Uh, I do have like classes on that for in depth uh, use of Adobe Express, and also as teachers or educators, we need to have like. A lot of patience and determination for us to, per, to to do this certification track. Okay, so I'm just going to tell you about this like platform on which the certification is being uh, hosted. It's called the Adobe Education Exchange. It's a free platform on which teachers can build their skills. They can also certify. They can open themselves for discussions, take online courses, self-paced courses, and a lot, lot more. In this, they have like lots and lots of free lessons, activities, projects that you can do in your class in which is all for free. Again, all for free, which is just like groundbreaking for me. So in each session that I'm, I'm running, I always ask the why. So why Adobe Education Exchange? It enables you to connect with fellow educators. It also gives you a way to prepare your students and also to validate their technical abilities in using not like not just like uh, not not like Adobe applications only, but also using creativity visually using their uh, medium of choice. And some of the key benefits of using uh, Adobe Education Exchange is that you can learn, you can also teach, because in this platform you can also upload your own content on which you can get like points for you to get like the next level of the uh, recognition that you deserve. Another one would be is to discuss a lot of things. For example, how do you uh, implement the use of, uh, of uh, this type of uh, approach to architecture, to humanities, to literature, even using Adobe Express on all of those topics. And 
the best thing about this is to this will enable you to connect with each other and uh i i also have like ways for them to to have um peer to peer mentorship so that's one of the key benefits there's a lot of benefits that you can do uh inside of adobe education exchange and there again there is a lot of distance learning resources and project ideas from higher ed to well being to almost every uh, aspect of the academic uh, life cycle. So I just want to give a, a temperature check for all of you. So I have like three questions. If you want to go to this uh, topic, you need an internet browser and yes, we need an Adobe ID. And then I'm just going to give you a demonstration of how to do this. Uh, next is, uh, what is, is, is Adobe Education for free? Adobe Education Exchange for free. Yes, it's totally free. You don't need to uh, purchase anything. You just have to log in, log into the website, and you're all. Uh, it's all open for you to uh, access. And I'm going to. Can you remember one key benefit of using Adobe Education Exchange? It's teach, connect, discuss, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll make you um, just figure it out on yourself. Okay, so. Let's move on to the main program that we're trying to, uh, to tell you. This is the Adobe Creative Educator program. So this program has been uh, running since like March of 2020. And uh, I've been like one of the first privileged ones to uh, get access to this here in the Philippines. And it's an exclusive community, but it's, it's really very, very open. You can get access to every subject area on which they have like professional learning experiences, resources uh, that enables you to spark creativity to your students and uh, have like leveled certifications with digital badges. And some of them would be like live and virtual online events. So the primary goal of Adobe Creative Educator program is that to help you acknowledge as a education professional. And it lets you support a group of what we call next generation of lifelong learners. So that's a very great goal uh, on which I also really support because the best way for you to be an effective educator or teacher is to enable the next, like your students to be better than you on what you're doing. So I'm just going to browse through this because I have lots and lots of slides for this uh, session. I usually run this. I usually run this campaign around two hours, but I, we only have like one hour of this. So I'm just going to explain this as for the levels for the hierarchy of what we're doing. We're doing like level one, on which would require you around three hours of intensive, like uh, absorbing all of the contents you're going to be uh, submitting a one assignment, which is the graphic manifesto. We're going to do that later. And if you're going to pursue it on a higher level, which is the level two, uh, as you see, it increases on difficulty. And the last one would be the AEL, which is uh, the Adobe Education Leader. It's also just by nomination and you have to undergo a lot of uh, like screening from the edX team for you to get in on this. On this. Okay, so I'm just going to give you like an accomplishment report of what we did in, here in the Philippines since April of 2020. Uh, we did like a lot of events, online events since that time. And by the numbers, we have like 35,217 plus Filipino members on the Adobe Education Exchange that we have onboarded. So all of these educators have been very supportive of what we have uh, done. It's not it's not all educators. All, some of them would be students. Some of them would, would be uh, creative professionals. So this number, our target number would be like 85,000. So we're halfway, halfway there. The next one would be we have certified a lot like 10,217 plus because uh, as of the moment, some of you would be like uh, jumping in into this session and get certified on this like for like the next following days so this number will be will go up and on level two uh we're trying to launch another campaign for this we we already we all we all have like 313 plus as of the moment so that's the figures that we have right now and 
usually the, the 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 usually the goal is like to give you a certification for ACE Level One. This is in partnership with Adobe Education Exchange and the Creative Nation Academy that I run as the co uh, co founder. So let's set up Adobe ID. If you're on your browser, I'm just going to switch to my browser here. Uh, I'm going to switch to like uh, the incognito window, so which you could like we could like create. Let's go to edX.adobe.com. I'm just going to type it in, and I'm just going to copy and paste it on our like chat box, so you could uh, follow along. So when you go to that site, this will enable you to create an Adobe ID. In my case. This is pretty simple. I'm just going to make this like bigger so uh, you can you could uh, see it more uh, practical. Okay, so let's go and create a new account. If you don't have an account, I'm just going to show you how to do it. Let's click on sign up and uh, sign up with your school email if you want. As of the moment, you can use the following methods. You can like use your Apple ID. You can use your Google account or you can also use your Facebook account. By clicking this, this will enable you to eliminate some of the uh, typing that you need because this one is already saved on your browser. But if you want, you can use your uh, school email. For example, if I, I have like a school email on my own, just type it in and you can type your password and easily this will bind you with your Adobe ID. After you created that, Adobe will send you a confirmation email on the email that you have provided. So this will be verified. So that's how easy it is for you to create an Adobe ID on just like five minutes of your time. Not even like five minutes, it's almost like two minutes of your time. So that's how easy it is. And after you do that, you go back again to edX.adobe.com on which you would see that you are already logged in. Uh, I have like mine already logged in here, so using my account. And this is a Adobe Education Exchange on which you can get like lots and lots of assets that you can take advantage of or use in your classroom. But the focus of our session is that we're going to do what we call the ACE Level 1 or Adobe Creative Educator Level 1. For you to find out where is the course, you can easily like click on search and type in creativity for all. That is the name of the actual course. So if I press on enter, this will enable me to search lots and lots of resources. And if you go here down on the professional learning uh, tab, you would see or the, the portion here, you can see that I have searched this creativity for all self-paced course. So you would see that I have completed this successfully. Uh, and uh, as of the moment, we have like 64,137 enrollees already here in this course. So let's click on that. So after you have clicked on that, this will launch you to the, uh, actual, the actual page on which you would see a, a button here, which is enroll now or um, uh, get started. On my case, it's download certificate because uh, I have I have like finished this uh, like years ago. But if you have like this uh, button, feel free to click it so you could get enrolled in this uh, course. So after you click that, this will enable you to be to 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 browse the overview on which I'm going to click now. Let's click on this, and you would see all of the topics that we're going to discuss on this session. So let's click on the first number, which is making the case for creativity. Let's click on that. And again, the, the interface would change because this one is like on the study mode that you're going to do for, for you to, uh, to, to get the program. You're just going to uh, read and also understand the contents of this uh, course. Uh, it's a self-paced course, so you don't need to, to uh, finish this on a certain critical period. Uh, you can finish this even for like, uh, as I know, it would be until 2030. <laughs> you can you can still do this until 2030. But uh, in our case, if you want, you can just do it on the first seating or one seating. You can do, definitely do, do this. 
let's click on this and then let's pretend I'm just going to fast paste my learning cycle. I'm just going to click on this or even read this. And uh, I'm just going to understand all of this. After that, after doing that, let's click on next. And just do until you have uh, gone into the portion on which, which is number 11. We're just going to read this, study this, click on next, read this, study this, click on next until you go into number 11. On which I'm going to give you some tips for you to, uh, to summarize all of this. As you would see here, using any Creative Cloud application, uh, they have suggested Creative Cloud Express or Adobe Express. You can also use Adobe Photoshop or uh, Illustrator. You're going to create an original graphic that responds to one of the following prompts. Okay, again, you're going to create an original graphic that responds to one of the following prompts. Actually, the, 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 the term original uh, can be used when you're trying to, 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 uh, to use like a template. You can also use that. So let's, uh, let's decide on what type of content are we going to create as our design or our graphic manifesto. Number one is how will you support your students' creativity? That's one thing. So you only need to select one. You just have to decide. Uh, number two would be what is your goal as a creative educator? So let's try and thinker. Uh, what am I going to provide solution on this? What type of prompt will I do? Let's do what is your, hmm, let's say, how will you support your students' creativity? Let's pick this, okay? So the next one is after you've selected one prompt, you're going to download and uh, finish your graphic manifesto using Adobe Express and download it as a PNG file image, okay? You can also do that on a JPEG, but PNG enables you to uh, generate a higher uh, quality of output. So that, the, the recommendation would be PNG image, okay? So after that, um, this will enable you to just click on next. And I'm going to share to you how can I create something like this using Adobe Express. I know uh, one fellow educator here at 21CL uh, International who has been who's been also been uh, uh, covering Adobe Express have given you a session on Adobe Express. But now I'm going to give you like a fast-paced um, a fast paced uh, five minute demonstration how you could do this. Okay, so let's go to Adobe Express right now. So I'm just going to again copy and paste the uh, URL or the, um, the address on which you could sign up. If you go here, express.adobe.com, and sign up again with your Adobe ID, this will enable you to log in again. I'm now on my, uh, my account. This will enable you to log in into Adobe Express for you to create your graphics, okay? You can easily create graphics using templates on which I'm going to do right now. Let's click on uh, this uh, text box and I'm just going to type in educator as a template, okay? So as I click that, you will see there's a lot of templates that you can use on Adobe Express, like thousands of them. And I'm just going to browse some of them uh, here. And finally, let's uh, let's see some uh, templates that we're going to use. Let's say, for example, I'm just going to modify my uh, search as for education. So let's type education. I know there's a there's a template that's a that's a great template that you can use here. Okay. Okay, for example, I'm going to use this because this one is for free. You can also check that. If you're not using, if you're not subscribed to Adobe Express, you would see something like a crown label on this because this one is a, a, a premium account on which the templates are better. On our case, let's just click on this template because this one is already free. Let's click on that and click, uh, click on start from. This will enable you to just like create a lot of stuff automatically by using the templates. So right now, I can definitely like click on a photo and I'm just going to remove that photo by pressing delete because it's not me, <laughs> okay? 
let's type in some uh, information here. Let's say, for example, uh, and you can type your name. For example, I'm going to type mine, Roland Banyes. Uh, let's type in on the year in review. Let's type in um, uh, Adobe Creative Educator. Doing this on the fly, so you can see, uh, this is a, a very fast uh, system on which you can create like visuals, and uh, I'm just going to type in some of my prompts, which is what's what's our prompt again? Um, how do you support students' creativity? How will I support students' creativity? Student creativity, okay. So you can uh, just resize this using this or uh, put a question mark here. So example like that, you can easily change the font. For example, let's make this very uh, prominent. Let's make, make this like red. Uh, you can easily like uh, type in your prompts. For example, um, teach them the concept of um, growth mindset, for example. mindset okay if i can spell right <laughs> okay so you can you can easily like create this kinds of designs let's click on this and delete this all of these shapes can be like modified to your heart's content for example let's make this again red uh let's uh move this graphic here because we're going to like make an emphasis on this uh, I can easily create photos. Let's say go here on our photos tab. Uh, on the photos section, this is all for free. You can use that. Uh, let's click on the Adobe stock uh, image. Let's say uh, students. Example. Uh, like this one. Let's click on that. And you can easily like uh, import the photos here. You can resize. You can make like cropping automatically here let's say i just want like three students on here and crop it like this so we could get we could give like emphasis on the three students here and let's click on apply and i'm just going to make this bigger and i could also like rotate this to my heart's content for example that one let's make it like a collage or a, a scrapbook type of material let's click on that you could, let's move this and let's move that you can also like add filters for this. Let's click on filters. So for example, let's click on uh, a new one. Let's like this one or this one. Uh, you can definitely like go uh, automatic on this. For example, that one. And um, let's type in another one, which is like um, make mistakes as learning experiences for example okay let's put that statement here let's make it bigger and then let's uh, make this move this here and add another photo if you want you can easily like create and upload another photo here for example if I want let's click on upload photo this will enable you to upload your own photo but I'm going to do that later Let's go back here to our students. Uh, you have lots and lots of options uh, as alternate sources. Let's click on this. You can also use your Google Drive if you want. If you have like photos of your students here, Google Photos. Mine is that I'm just going to browse again to some of the um, photos that Adobe Stock has. Let's say I'm just going to pick one. Uh, for example, this one. Okay. And then again, I'm just going to crop this to make this like only two of them. Let's click on crop and shape. Let's make this here. Smaller. Move the content. Make it smaller. And I'm just going to resize this later on. Let's click on the accept button. And then let's make it bigger. Let's make it here. And let's make this uh, somehow an irregular movement. For example, let's click on this. Okay. So let's, again, let's go back to, if you want to enhance this photo, you can definitely do so. If you want to add more like brightness, contrast, highlight, shadows, all of that stuff, you can definitely do so. Let's click on filters. 
and you can make a lot of designs by using that. Uh, the next thing would be if I if I'm going to add a photo of mine, let's click on uh, upload photo. I'm just going to go to my desktop and add a photo of myself here. Let's say this one. I think this one is the best photo I have for this. Oh, okay. So as you would see here, this is my photo, but I I like I have like a background here. Adobe has what we call um, a remove background feature on which when you select a photo, you can easily like click on remote remove background and automatically, <laughs> right? I said that correctly. Automatically, you could easily like knock out or remove the background automatically. Let's click on plus here. And as you would see, I have like created my photos here. I can like make some, okay. And then I'm just going to uh, reorder the layer here. Let's go back here, way, way back. So you can easily like make changes on this. Okay, so you can definitely see that. I'm just going to reposition some of my elements here. And, uh, or you want, I can just easily crop my own photo and make this like a uh, circle one on which you can definitely see I have created something like this. Uh, I'm just going to move this a little bit here. And move my photo here. So you can easily like create something like this. And after all of that, you can also uh, redesign this with the background on your mind. Let's click on that. There's a lot of uh, backgrounds that you can use here. There's lot, like lots and lots of them. You can easily like implement on your designs, but I'm just not going to do that right now. If you want to create variations of this design, let's click on the duplicate page here, and you can go to colors. Let's click on colors, and this will enable you to like generate automatically colors that you want your designs to be. For example, if I want to be like on the green side of things, I can easily do so. Let's click on the shuffle. And uh, if I want, I could like make variations of this design into another layout. For example, let's make this another layout. Let's make this, for example, like this one, this type of design. You can easily like create some of this. You can shuffle the content. You can easily create another design based from your uh, other designs that we have here. For example, that one. You can easily click that. Nice and easy. Let's click on resize if you want. From your perspective, you can easily create from this square perspective. You can easily like create a uh, cover photo for your Facebook page. You can easily do that. You just need to like reposition some of the elements here. So that's how easy it is for you to create versions of your designs with just a matter of clicks and repositions. And after that, I can easily go back to my first page and download it as to, to submit this to our uh, assignment. Let's click on download. And again, this one, this page would be on the PNG side. Let's click on start download. And this will automatically like save this into your file. So let's click on that. Let's double click on this. You would see that I already have finished my design and uh, I'm ready to publish this to Adobe Education Exchange for me to get my certification badge. Okay, let's click on that. Let's click on close and let's go back to the uh, Adobe Education Exchange. And on my number, on, on, on my uh, assignment tab, you would see that I'm just going to give you some tips on this. If you click on edit, please uh, put the title on an appropriate uh, name. For example, what is your what is the prompt that you have chosen? For example, my case, I have, uh, for example, uh, I've used how will you support your students' creativity? Let's click on that. And you can just type it in again here or copy and paste that because the first, the last time that I did this, it was, I picked number two. Okay. So, uh, I just pick on number two. Let's let's put let's put on that because some of my students on on this session they're just putting my project. No, don't do that. Uh, put the actual prompt that you're trying to solve. In my case, I'm just uh, putting goals as an Adobe Creative Educator, and then I'm just uh, explaining 
the the part on which uh, how can I use or answer the prompt correctly. In my example, in this assignment, I have created webinars to help students using Adobe Spark or Adobe Express. And it's just about storytelling and uh, building your, your reason on how you could, uh, how could you uh, answer the prompt. In, in my case, uh, my, my prompt is goal as, an, uh, as a creative educator, okay? So uh, what's, your, what's, your, what, what's the next thing? Let's click on add images here. So if you click on that, let's click on this, or you can drop, you can just drop, uh, you can drop the file. For example, uh, where's my downloads here? Let's click on my project. Let's click on open, and automatically this will upload to your uh, assignment page. You just need to be patient and wait for it. So after this is done, you just click on done here, and you see, I have lots and lots of them already because I'm always demonstrating this on every class. So as you would see, this one is my submission right now, the one that I that we did. Uh, let's click on that. Let's close on that. And after that, you're just going to press the next button. On my case, I'm not going to press the next button because this will enable me again to, uh, to uh, repeat the process. But on your end, you just need to press the next button. Uh, granted that you have already submitted and can see that your images have have, uh, have already been uploaded, okay? Just make sure that your image is already uploaded and then click on next. After that, um, that's, this is a very um, required procedure. After you have submit this and you can click save, you go to peer review and you have to provide a peer review to other uh, other educators inside the, the platform. For example, if I go here and let's say, um, let's go back like number three. Let's say I'm just going to uh, go here for Franz Villate, for example. Oh, not that. You're going to click on the, for example, this one. Uh, this one is from Alison Barry. Uh, he has... He has provided the, the best like caption for this. Let's click Creative Educator Goal. And you will see he has explained his side of the prompt. And uh, he has supplied the image, for example. And then you just have to provide like three comments for this. Let's say a uh, uh, nice, a uh, great use of um, text into an arc. Design, clean and simple. Let's say, for example, this one, clean and simple, easy to understand. Just provide three peer reviews after clicking next. This will congratulate you. Again, you need three peer reviews for you to pass this uh, program. You just have to repeat it, okay? This will enable you to have like three, uh, one check mark on your first try. And in my case, I have already like done this a thousand times. That's why I only have already three, have three. This will, when you when you see the congratulations page, this will uh, validate you that you have already completed this session. Okay, so that's one part of the the program. I'm just going to go back to my slides to explain further what's going to happen after. The submission of the assignment. Let's go back here. Um, just for recap, we have already set up our Adobe ID. We learned a lot of this. Uh, again, this is creativity for all. You can easily like check this out. If you have a QR code scanner, you just type it in. Um, you go to Adobe Express. Uh, this is some of the examples of the submissions that the teachers here in the Philippines have uh, uh, done on our first session. Imagine uh, some of them have no like design experiences and they have created a lot of this like uh, designs on the fly. We also have created like web pages for them to give orientation or give directions to their students, especially when the, when the when pandemic has started way back in 2020. Uh, I've already given you a demonstration on how to use Adobe Express. You can definitely check it out again. 
on the replay. And again, congratulations, you're one step closer to becoming an ace level one. So what do you expect? After doing that, edX will send you an email congratulating you that you have passed the certification. You can download the certificate. The, the button that you clicked uh, previously, which is the enroll now or start now, or I forgot the actual term right now, this will be changed into the download certificate. So how can we uh, check that? For example, let's go back here. Uh, let's go back on our creativity for all. You would see that this one is already download certificate. Okay. When you click on that, this will enable you to download your certificates on which you can type in, let's say, your name and uh, to verify. And you can just download this to your heart's content. And you can just uh, apply this any to any credentials that you want. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this will definitely uh, give you the edge already because this one is issued by Adobe. And let's go back here on my slides. And uh, this will also give you a credentials from Credly. Uh, if we just go to credly.com, credly.com. We just need to sign up again for a credly.com account. I'm just going to sign in on my end. Uh, I'm just using, going to use my email address. Uh, just going to check if I still have like the credentials for this. If I can still remember, right? <laughs> okay. As you would see here, I have lots and lots of badges I have accomplished throughout the years I've been into Adobe Education Exchange. Let's click on profile, badges, and right now I've lost count. I, I think I, oh, okay. I already have like 58 badges already here. Um, like this will give you like the edge on your credentials because, for example, this one, if I click on that, you can easily share this to your social media, to all of your... Uh, channels. For example, let's click on share. You can easily share this to LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. You can download the image and you can also download the certificate itself inside of credly.com. Okay? So lots and lots of learning experiences, lots and lots of credentials that you can uh, foresee and um, pursue using this, um, this platform, as you would see here. Like, I've been here for almost, yeah, almost a decade now. Okay? Let's go back here to uh, my slides. Again, edX will email you. You can download the certificates. You can also download it inside of Credly. And this is somehow the email that is going to be uh, sent to you. That's one of the examples because uh, this example is from because I have like access to the to the to the to this program before even if it's uh, on the public side. That's why I, ha I have like this get early access. Okay. Uh, what to expect? You have to expect like three hours of uh, doing this. And if, you, if you're going to wait for the approval, it will take you like a day or even two weeks for you to get certified on this. So you just need some patience on it. Okay. Um... Things to avoid, there is some of the emails that is not uh, confirming your ACE uh, certification. They are just ranking emails. Uh, if you don't have like attachments on your assignments, the facilitators or the one who's checking the, the what you call this, the submissions will not <laughs> entertain your submission. So you have to really check your assignments that, is, as, that has been attached. Has been attached on this an appropriate topic. Don't use like my project, my designs. Use the actual prompt that you're trying to solve. For example, goal as an Adobe Creative Educator, or how do I support my students' creativity? For example, okay. Um, and then not answering the prompts because, as you would see here, this is irrelevant content on which this one is. Uh, it tastes yummy, but <laughs> it, it's not answering the prompts. Okay or no effort at all because you're using a template and you do, you do not even change anything on the template, <laughs> don't do that, okay? And repeating assignments, it's just good that you upload one and then just let it be. Do not upload like four, five of them with the same content. It's, it's not that good for the facilitators to check. No email. Uh, you can definitely like check the spam for some of the um, uh, lost emails. We probably missed it. 
And uh, I'm going to just give you some tips before we wrap up on things. Uh, please complete your profile. If you want, you can just easily go to the edX page. If you go to your profile, let's click on my profile. And after that, you would uh, it would give you access to all of your information that you can edit. For example, if I click on here, I can just edit a lot of things. And this will give you a lot, lots and lots of points inside of Adobe Education Exchange. Points that you can definitely leverage if you want to be a leaderboard. If you want to be on the leaderboard, for example, uh, I'm on the second place right now. Uh, I'm just trying to beat this guy. No, <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm, I'm just very competitive right now. So as you would see. And um, let's go back to my slides. Uh, complete the self-paced courses because each self-paced course enables you to gather more points for you to get more, uh, get more like credentials or credibility for Adobe Education Exchange. Uh, you would see there's a lot, lots and lots of certificates and uh, accreditations inside of this, all for free. Again, all of this is for free. You just need to follow also some of your fellow educators, but do not spam them because <laughs> uh, there is also what we call the ranking status. This will get you be. Uh, this will help you to get the Adobe Education Leader ranking or get inside the Adobe Education Leader uh, uh, circle. Uh, you can also add your credentials after you have been certified to your LinkedIn account. And uh, I'm just very uh, uh, honored to be part of this, the Adobe Education Leader Contributor Program that they have uh, published. Uh, I'm one of the few uh, Filipinos on that note because I've been doing this for almost 10 years. It's, it's, it's really a labor of love, for example. And uh, we already did some sessions from way back in 2018 when we started the Adobe Education Summit here in the Philippines. I've been one of the speakers because I was coined as the first Adobe campus leader in, in, the, in the Philippines. So that's one of the things that I've been doing for a very long time. And for additional info, you can also, after you have submitted like level one, you can easily like go to level two. Uh, and do a lot of the Adobe Express video and page uh, activities. I also have an I also have a video of that in in my YouTube channel. And to summarize, we have learned a lot of things. We've learned how to use the Adobe Education Exchange. We have created an Adobe ID. We have created designs from Adobe Express or Adobe Spark. We have submitted assignments for Level One Creativity for All, and I've given you some insights on going forward for Ace Level Two. Okay, so if you have like questions, uh, feel free to type it in on our chat box or even after this session, I can easily like, check the questions so I could uh, help you. And uh, again, my name is Roland Banyas. I'm the co-founder, training director for Creative Nation Academy. You can definitely connect with me on my social media uh, channels on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and on my YouTube channel and also on TikTok. <laughs> Uh, you can easily uh, join our page, which is uh, Adobe Creative Educators Philippines. It's a growing community of uh, Filipino and even uh, even other um, ACE participants all over the world. We are growing as strong as 7,000 right now. And again, subscribe to our channel, Creative Nation Academy, so you could help us create more content such as this one. Again, I would like to thank uh, Justin and 21CL uh, International for having me as a guest in this session. And uh, thank you to all of you and have a great day. Thank you very much, uh, Roland. If there are any questions out there, please drop them in. But um, I would like to say I really appreciated getting the overview of uh, the creative community. I had no idea all of those resources were out there. Uh, yes. And it's uh, really powerful for uh, you know people to, to learn on their own, to get credentials, uh, and to, to, as you say, empower their students to be uh, creative with uh, contemporary tools. So thank you very much. It's been a, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, uh, All right. everyone. Cheers.